The Bible informs us in Genesis 1 that the lights in the heavens are for signs and for seasons. Biblical examples are the star announcing the birth of Jesus the Messiah, or the Lord extending sunlight for a day to assist Joshua in battle. Modern history records four successive blood moons landing specifically on Jewish feasts during monumental events such as the third birth of Israel or the recapture of the city of Jerusalem. Now in September of 2023, the Lord is unveiling perhaps the greatest billboard the globe has ever seen, announcing and declaring for all the world to marvel at the glory of the Lord. Not only is the Revelation 12 sign reappearing during the Feasts of Trumpets in September, but there is also an unheralded number of details that defy even the most ardent skeptics and well beyond all mathematical plausibility of coincidence. Please join us now for a journey through the heavens using the telescopic lens of biblical foundations in God's immensely huge, enormously large, and massively humongous billboard in the sky. Hello everybody, my name is Mark. You're watching and or listening to the Russick Outlook. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I, I promise you, you will be delighted that you did. There is so much incredible, uh, mind-blowing information here that I believe will just leave you stunned, floored. Uh, in, in, oh, I, I found myself in preparing this information and doing the study that I, I was just left in awe of, of how magnificent and how great our Lord is. And I, and I believe that this is, as, as big as this is, I believe it's a display of mercy that the time is drawing near before the return of Jesus. And, and I believe no matter where you uh, sit today, you know, whether you're watching or listening to this, whether you believe in the Lord or not, I, I, I trust that after this, at the very least— you will reach out to him and ask him if, if, if he is, is real. And, and I believe this is just, it's just so over the top and, and the details that go into it, and you'll, you'll see. Again, I don't want, although I don't want to overhype it, I did a title that's a little tongue-in-cheek, so bear with me. And the title of this message is God's Immensely Huge, Enormously Large, and Massively Humongous Billboard in the Sky. And, and, you know, although that's a little tongue in cheek, as I said, I, I think as we go through this information, and, and I have a lot of videos, a lot of details to go through, so so hang in there. I'm going to ask my podcast listeners. I so appreciate you. I would encourage you, if you can, to get a hold of the videos. You can go to RussickOutlook.com. You can go to Rumble. You can go to YouTube. Um, because of uh, all, all of the different visuals that that are really required to get this message across so uh you know on that note i i, I that's my suggestion and i think if you are podcast listening a after you listen you'll you'll probably want to do that and um you know again share this information uh, because i really think it, it, it it's that important so let me let me get to this as i said here we go so by god's Billboard in the sky, uh, and you know, as I'm saying here, we're looking into the heavens, we're looking into the stars and the space and constellation and whatnot. So this is what we're going to be examining. And in doing so, um, most of the slides and the presentations that you will see is from a software program called Stellarium. And I, I want to mention this because I've had to take a lot of screenshots. I'm just starting to learn the software. Um, but this is a, a kind of a staple, if you will, uh, for a lot of astronomers, even, you know, novice. It's free software. You can go there and you can download it. There's a uh, web version or there, there are apps for Windows or Mac or your phone. I think there's, yeah, there is. There's a mobile app. So, um a lot of the slides and the information that you'll see later on, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction first, uh, comes from there. So uh, if you do, that would be great because I'd love to hear from you after you watch this. If you start learning some of these things and applying it, 
I, I, you know, I'd love to have those conversations or emails or, you know, messaging back and forth. But Stellarium software, I, I, you can view things from anywhere in the universe. It will give you that perspective, that angle at any date and time. You can cross-reference by looking up planets, suns, stars, uh, um, asteroids, comets. You'll see we're going to be getting into. Um, you can, you know, uh, I, when I was starting to play with it, I, you know, I put myself from the perspective of Mars. And then you can view things from Mars to, you know, anywhere. You could do things like that. It's, it's immensely sophisticated. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, put that out there. I don't get anything for it. It's not an a advertisement, but I do think it's an, an, an incredible program. Um, so I need to lay a foundation. Uh, I, I recognize that there may be, and there probably is a lot of uh, seasoned uh, Christians, uh, but I, I, I want to speak to or lay the groundwork for anybody, no matter where you're coming from, whether you are sitting on the fence, you're not sure what you believe, uh, maybe you're an atheist, maybe you're agnostic, uh, <clears throat> whatever the case may be. So I want to lay a quick foundation, give you some examples, and then we're going to get right into it. So uh, hold on to your seat, because here we go. So um, Genesis 1 lays it out right away, where it says, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night, and let them be for signs and for seasons. So, and this is the emphasis for us here, it's for signs. Uh, I, we're going to see that the Lord is using the heavens and the and, and, and the stars, and, and you'll see so much more as signs. Um, if I look at Luke 21, 25 through 26 in the upper right, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth. Nations will be in anguish. I'm sorry, this is for when Jesus is telling what will happen in the latter days in the time of tribulation. Um, so, and, and, and he goes on to say, uh, on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So th that's just two examples. I'll give a couple more. But my point here is Jesus is telling you danger is coming. You know, there, there's calamity coming. And um, I believe that this is a warning uh, and, and we'll get into a little bit why I believe there's some analogies here where Jesus said at one point in the scriptures, as in the day when they were asking him, what will be the signs of the seasons or the signs of your return? And he said, it will be as in the days of Noah. Uh, uh, people will be eating and drinking and going about their business. Um, much like that, I believe today, you have a lot of naysayers. Peter says there will be skeptics and uh, scoffers, he calls them. Uh, and, and you see that all around today. And then suddenly, you know, time will be up and, and the ark, the door of the ark closed after seven days. And, it, you know, that's really what, what I believe what we're, we're uh, coming near. So Psalm 19, 19, 1 through 5, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech. I will say this, we, NASA has done recordings, the stars um, they, they actually say that you can, it almost sounds like an orchestra uh, with the different frequencies and vibrations of uh, the, the different elements and, and the mass elements or the mass pieces uh, in, in, in the heavens. Uh, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. That's just kind of reemphasizing what I was saying. I'm um, going to go to a couple more scriptures here. Let me cut to the... So, on screen, uh, upper left, Amos 5 through 8, he made the Pleiades and the Orion. He turns the shadow of death into morning. So I just wanted to emphasize that. He's, he's giving you uh, the, the, those stars that we're very familiar with. And Job 38, uh, 31 through 33, first one on the lower left, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion Cast thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or guide Arcturus with his sons, which is, again, in the heavens. Um, so the Maseroth is the Hebrew study of the, of the heavens. And there you have a biblical sighting for it, and this is not uh, astrology. And I, I'm going to say this because we're going to use the symbols of astrology 
primarily, we're going to be looking at uh, Virgo, the woman, and Leo, the lion, uh, because that's what people are familiar with. And I'm even going to give you a scriptural reference to how even Paul uh, identified with some of the things uh, from the culture of the day. So that's why, uh, you know, I'm doing this. No, no, nothing about this has to do with astrology. This has to do with the study of the heavens and the Maseroth, and this is how the, the Hebrews study it. So there is a strong biblical foundational reference for the Lord uh, using the heavens and the stars and the sun and the moon and whatnot. Um, and I would say, additionally, Satan has done the same. If you go to the construction of the pyramids, they line up specifically like, you, you know, within a 20th of a degree of certain constellations and planets and, and stars. Just, you know, again, nothing that mankind could have ever been able to uh, put together 4,000 years ago. So uh, Job 9 through 7, he mentions or Orion and Pleiades again. And then Isaiah 40, 26, lift up your eyes on high. Behold, who has created these things that brings out their host by number. He calls them by names. So of all the stars, in, you know, in, in the heavens, he calls them by names. That's how magnificent the Lord is. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of others here, and I'm going to cite what I was talking about with, with, with Paul. Um, Job 38 through 33, again, he mentions Pleiades and, and uh, Orion. He mentions Ursa Major, the bear. Acts 28, uh, and after three, and this is Paul, and after three months we were departed in a ship of Alexandria, Alexandria, I'm sorry, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, again, in the heavens. Um, and Mark, but in those days, the following that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. So all references to signs that he will give in the heavens. I just wanted to uh, point out that when Paul talked about Castor and Pollock, Pollux, I'm sorry, uh, that is in the constellation we know as Gemini. And over here it says, you know, on the right, this is about Greek mythology. So when uh, uh, Gemini was associated with the myth of Castor and Pollux, the children of Leda and Argonauts both, Pollux was the son of Zeus who seduced Leda, while Castor was the son of Tidarius, king of Sparta and Leda's husband. Castor and Pollux were also mythologically associated with St. Elmo's fire in their role as the protectors of the sailors. So this is, you know, how the sailors took note of it. When Castor died because he was mortal, Pollux begged his father Zeus to give Castor immortality, and he did by uniting them together in the heavens. So, yes, that's Greek mythology, but my point is the the sailors and the and, and and the seamen of Paul's time, and I'm sure Paul, you know, and, and and obviously even today, you know, they look to the heavens, they look to the stars to help with their navigation. You know, today you have sophisticated instruments, but if an instrument died, that's how you know they would do it. The other thing that we have to take into account, because we're really going to be talking a lot about the Feast of Trumpets. Just a very brief primer on what we're calling God's sacred calendar. Ironically, um, I, I referenced this in, in August's headlines. Uh, but Moed's, if you go to, it's, called, it's basically referenced to the uh, appointed time. So you have the spring Moed's, which have been complete. Again, I'm sure most are familiar with this. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost. Jesus fulfilled all of these. Um, Jesus' death. Uh, for Passover, and um, he was buried, unleavened bread. Resurrection was the day of first fruits, and sure enough, 50 days later, on the exact day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit fell on the 120 in the upper room. Then you have the fall moeds, which is the Feast of Trumpets, Tabernacles, and the Day of Atonement. These are the fall moeds, and these are the three that have yet to be fulfilled. I would like to point out that Many people, and we're going to be looking at this, the, day, the uh, Feast of Trumpets falls in a two-day window. And because it follows the Hebrew calendar, it's never consistent year after year. It's not like, okay, Christmas, December 25th, something like that. Um, and so it, it kind of fluctuates. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's the case with their seasons because it's a 360-day year by the lunar 
the calendar as opposed to the Gregorian and the sun calendar. I, I say all of this because G, many people, and I happen to be one of them, believe that the resurrection of, of, of the church body and the calling up in the rapture of the church um, happens on the Feast of Trumpets. And it, I, it, interestingly, it's also known as the day that no one knows. And remember that Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, only, only my Father knows. And you can know the seasons in that two-day window, but you wouldn't know the day or the hour ahead of time because... And I believe that's something to go by. And I also recognize that many people do not believe in the rapture of the church or they believe it will happen at the culmination of the seven-year tribulation. I personally cannot get my head wrapped around that. I've studied it. Uh, scripturally, it makes no sense to me. Um, and then there are some that believe the rapture will happen midway. Some will go. Some will. It's just, And I've covered that before in the past, and many people have. But I'm saying all of this because we are going to be talking a lot to, or a lot today. We're going to be emphasizing uh, the Feast of Trumpets, um, and again, some other references that the Jews, Jewish people, would call. Still, no one would know the day of the hour with the wedding day of the Messiah, the day of the awakening blast. So, those are some other names that 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 are used for that. Um, almost closing the foundation. Then we're going to get into it. I promise. Uh, I'm going to go to video again. Some more examples. You have the day the sun stood still, Joshua. Uh, I did want to point out that there's indisputable evidence from science of methodology that such an event occurred in Joshua's records. It also mentions in ancient uh, Chinese writings and uh, the Incas of Peru, the Aztecs of Mexico have an event recorded like it. Uh, there is a Babylonian and a Persian legend of a day that was miraculously extended. Herodias, an ancient historian, recounts that while in Egypt, the priest showed him the temple records that read there was a day twice as long as the natural length. And that's exactly what is recorded in the book of Joshua, where the Lord extended the day um, for an additional 24 hours to give Joshua the light he needed for victory. Um, you have, to me, the greatest sign that people are very familiar with, the sign of, of, of the Star of David of, of announcing the birth of Jesus. And I want, I, I, I've done a study on this, um, and, and I think it's called, the, it's right around December. There was two of them I did in the past two Decembers. The Shining Signpost of the Messiah, and there was something, the Magdi, and I forget the name, but it, it, it centers around the information because it's very clear in Scripture that this occurred, and because of this software that we have, the Stellarium software, they can go back in time and see what the the heavens were like, and so they were able. I don't think I referenced Stellarium. I might have in in this, but at any rate, um, it, the uh, Jupiter passed Regulus three times, and this happens in Leo and. Also, you're going to see Regulus is called the King Star. Please remember this. Regulus is called the King Star because it's going to come into play uh, in a little while. And Jupiter uh, appears 11 times the size, the diameter of the Earth, with when it aligns with the King's planet um, and, and, and Regulus. I'm saying all of this because there is verifiable software proof that you can go back to this time and you can see something that would appear so magnificently huge, whether you're daytime or night, you would see it standing in the sky because of Regulus, which is the largest uh, star, but and it's called the King Star, <clears throat> and Jupiter, which with the Maseroth, they refer to uh, Jupiter as the planet of the Messiah. So, um, but I, I ask you to remember this. Then there's the... The blood moons, which is um, uh, a tetrad of um, four consecutive blood moons that happened at different times in history. I'll put this back up on video. Um, and it always happens exactly on the Jewish feast. In this case, it was Passover and Sukkot uh, for two consecutive years. And I give you the dates here. It also, so it happened, the first recording we have is 1492 and 93. Interestingly, that's the year the Jews were expelled from Spain. Columbus discovers America. 
Then it didn't happen again until 1949 and 50, which was the year after Israel declared itself a nation, but that was also the year that their government was established. 67 and 68, it happened again, same thing. What happened then? Jerusalem is recaptured uh, in the Six-Day War. They have access to that. Then 2014 and 2015, a lot of people, you know, still are not sure, but I would say one thing that stands out to me, that was the year uh, or a little bit more where Jews first had access to the Temple Mount. And, you know, you see them going up there today. The, the Arabs or Muslims do not like it, but uh, nonetheless they do. Which brings us to what we're going to talk about, which first occurred in 2017, but then it's on massive um, hyperdrive compared to what happened in 2017. So this centers on the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and it says this, And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign in heaven appeared, behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns on his heads, seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule the nations with a rod of iron. But her child, the church, was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared for God uh, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. So there we're talking about um, the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 144,000 um, witnesses. Imagine 144,000 like Paul. I mean, that's, that's, that's how incredible it will be. But that's the foundational scripture that we're going to. Why are we talking about this? Well, it said a great sign appeared in heaven. So I want to show you something as we go through this real quick on video, just so you get your eyes used to this. Because depending upon the angle of which you look at it and certain things are displayed, this is on the lower left, Virgo. You see it on the lower right. Um, and then you see, you'll, you'll see some of the presentations that I'll make. We'll draw the lion in for Leo and the woman in for Virgo, and then you see it in the upper right. But the larger uh, image here on the left is Virgo underneath and then Leo. So that's physically what it looks like in the heavens. So I, I be, I, I'm, I'm doing this to get your eyes acclimated to some of the images that we'll see moving forward. Uh, so hopefully you remember that. Now, jumping to 23rd of September, 2017. Uh, this was the Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. So the last time this event happened was almost 6,000 years ago, about the time of Adam and Eve. So what happened? Well, exactly the 12 stars where you see Leo, if you're following me on video, um, there's nine stars and then the three planets make up the 12 stars. And that happened exactly on the Feast of Trumpets. It lined up exactly as the Revelation said. It said the sun will be on her shoulder. The sun is on her shoulder. The moon will be at her feet. You see the lower left, the moon is at her feet. The other interesting thing that happened, and in the lower right I show you this, for 41 weeks from 2016 to 2017, the planet Jupiter, which remember in, in the Maseroth is referred to the, the planet of the Messiah, retrograded within that circumference of, of what would appear to be the woman's belly or, or, or womb, and then came out on Rosh Hashanah. So, I mean, this was just absolutely amazing. So everything lined up uh, in, in terms of astronomically positioned exactly as, as it did, and it happened on the Feast of Trumpets in 2017. So the reason I'm, I'm saying all this too. I believe this was a clear sign from the Lord. There are others that would say it was a big, uh, um, I, I'm trying to remember, there's a, there's a minister online who is talking about some of the stuff that we're going to be covering, Robert. He, called, he said some people called it a nothing burger. Um, I can't remember his last name. Um, but at any rate, and, it, and he's a great teacher too. So, uh, 
and and I'm going to show you some things that happened that I I would agree with him that that was no nothing burger, but at the very least it was an incredible sign that exactly what was laid out in Scripture happened. Um, the one thing that we're not going to cover here, but I will cover in the next video, is about the dragon and Satan, um, because there's just so much to, to, to get in this one presentation. So last, before I get into what's going on, um, I just wanted to say, what happened in 2017 and 2018, which I believe personally stood out. Um, that is when 45 uh, made the declaration declaring Jerusalem the capital in terms of America's recognition. And this was the first nation in world history to do so. Uh, they recognized Israel in 1948, but Jerusalem has always been under debate. And, you know, I'm not going to give the history lesson here. But I believe that this was a stellar event. Since then, I show you when, uh, on the top there, there are seven other nations that have uh, followed America's lead. They're smaller nations, but nonetheless, they're, they've done it. Guatemala, Honduras, the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nehru, Palu, and Togo, and Czech Republic and Hungary are supposedly very close behind, and they may be doing it very shortly. So on December 6th, 2017, that is exactly what the Lord did. Uh, I'm sorry, that's exactly what uh, um, uh, 45 did. And on May 14th, 2048, 2018, I'll get it right, um, was the 70th anniversary of the state of Israel. So that is the day that America opened the, uh, the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, the first country to do so. So I, I, I just personally believe that that fell in line with what we saw as a major event. And remember, talking about the blood red moons and things like that. Um, I don't know of anything else that stuck out from that time. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, anything else I say would be mere speculation at best. So I did want to point out on the lower right, just to kind of get you uh, used to this, the, the Hebrew calendar, as I said, is its own calendar, goes by the lunar. And so when we see the, the new year come in for Rosh Hashanah, uh, 2017 to 2018 in September, that was 5778, 5779 and so forth. And then when you have, here we are in 2023, um, it will be uh, 5783. 2022 to 22, so that's what it is today, I'm sorry. And then when we go in, I'm recording this on September 13th, several days before Rosh Hashanah, but then it will be the new year of 5784. So I just, you know, not knowledge, it's just information. And then the last thing I'm going to close with is Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, September 15th through 17th this year in 2023, Yom Kippur, otherwise known as the Day of Atonement, uh, September 24 and 25, and Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, September 29 through 21. And the, the, there's always uh, symbols associated with the Hebrew alphabet. So if you put the 5784, um, it actually means open door. And, and I wanted to cite here that in the book of Revelation 3.8, it says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. So hopefully, if you're listening or watching to this program, you are one of those who will not bow to uh, to Satan. Uh, and I'll say that even if you don't do that figuratively, if you ignore the Lord, if you ignore Jesus, um, you know, that's really giving in to, giving in to the enemy. Um, so... That is what this year that we're about to occur means, open door. So now I'm going to get into what's happening in the heavens today. And, you know, I apologize. No, I don't apologize, but I needed to lay that foundation. So hopefully, you know, that was good. So I am showing you some images from Stellarium. Uh, on the left-hand side, oh, no, I didn't cut to that. I'm sorry. Here we go. On the left-hand side, um, you, you have images of asteroids. There are 1.3 million asteroids 
that have been discovered, identified, and named over time, and approximately 4,000 comets. So every one of those little yellow specks that you see uh, it has an, an asteroid associated with it. That's how many. And I'm saying all of this because of the precision that we're about to see and the names of these asteroids and comets are very, very, very specific. So staying with video, there is a, uh, well, actually, let me cut back here for a second. So let me set the stage. There is a comet that um, has been sitting relatively dormant up until the last year and then for thousands of years. And again, they can trace this through the software. And it began to move, and it was discovered in August of 2023, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, discovered August 11th by Hideo Nishimura. And these names are important, and you'll see as we go along. Um, so he discovered this, and it is moving from where it was. And matter of fact, let's go to video now. So you see kind of that red dot, and I was just me drawing that in to give you an idea. It was a ways off, and it has come, and it's really picked up speed in August and is now going through Leo the lion. This is why I wanted you to get used to those images. And it is coming down through the woman, and when it gets to the sun, we're long, so remember the, the sun will be on the side of the woman's head, uh, it casts a double illumination that can be seen in the daytime and the night, and it is 11 times brighter than normal. So it's, it's so bright that the daytime can see it. Um, and I, I, so the name Ni, uh, Nishimura, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Hideo, Hideo is his first name, it means great, magnificent, eminent, distinguished husband and laborer. So Nishimura, he named it after himself, otherwise known as C-2023. All of these numbers, I'm sorry, all of these asteroids and, and comets have letters and numbers associated with it, as well as a name. The, the discoverer has the right, if you will, to, to name it. So Nishimura uh, just gives you a little history. Uh, it's stayed dormant and still above Canis Major for uh, 2,000 years up until 2023. Uh, then it stood above uh, Pupis for 2,000 years, and it only moves for a year in, in 2023 and 2024. So it's only moving now after sitting dormant for thousands of years. It begins to move very quickly in 2023 for its design purpose. It circles through Orion, and I'm giving you these dates here from January to July for to Pollux, which is Gemini. Remember we talked about that, July and August. Then it flies through Cancer. Again, this has had great speed um, during the super blue moon, and it's now it, up until the 17th. It's flying through Leo, and it hits Virgo um, on the 16th uh, and to the, the uh, September 25th. So right at the beginning of Trumpets and then there a, a little bit after. So my point here is it's moving and it's interesting to me specifically with the name and the name means husband. Additionally, this is Hideo and I show you that in Japanese. When you put the name together, Hideo Nishimura, it means excellent man, bright and shining, go west. So Luke 12, 54 through 56, he being Jesus said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say it's going to rain and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? This is coming from the west. So you know, you can say, coincidence? I, th I personally think not. And, and this is the scripture that goes right hand in hand with it. Uh, so again, um, esteemed husband, laborer, uh, excellent man, bright and shining, and go west. So that's the meaning of the comet that's traveled about and is going down. And there's, m there's more meaning 
of where it goes through that I will get into. I'll tell you right up front, I have to do a second video because I'm going to give you the meat of this, but then there's so much more uh, to, to come because it's, it's, again, God in the details. It's just amazing. So now, okay, you may say, so what? Okay, there's a comment, and it happens to me, an excellent man, husband. Okay, you know, what else you got? I got more. <laughs> So let me cut back to the video. So that same image you were seeing, right? I now did a little scribble there on the lower portion um, with the green circles. And then there's an asteroid that came through it and you can see it, it is lying, what appeared to be in the stomach or the womb of the virgin of the woman. And the uh, asteroid happens to me named, uh, named child. And uh, the then below that, near the feet, you see that on the lower right, is another asteroid, and it is named Yeshua. And so, again, Yeshua, you know, many people are familiar with that as being the Lord uh, and, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit, but Yeshua, Yehushua, I'm sorry, Yeshua, uh, I believe, you know, signifies that. It's slight of a different spelling, but to me, very close. And I personally don't find that to be a coincidence. But so there you have this comet coming through, highlighting it, still the same, going right through it, and it's named husband. And then you have child in the womb and Yeshua down below observing this. So everything still remains the same. Now what I would like to do, I'm going to show you on this software um, exactly what happens a couple of days beforehand and exactly as we approach the Feast of Trumpets. So on this, I'm, I'm showing you in a different um, color, color display. It's, it's, I, there's a term for it, I forget, but you're flipping the colors and I'm, I'm hoping this stands out a little bit more and uh, hopefully you still understand that's the woman there. So top left, and you, you know you can see it's typing in. If you wanted to zoom in, it is September 14th, but I typed it on top of it, above it. And you see the child where it is, and you see uh, Yeshua uh, da down below in the lower left. Then you see it's starting to move, September 15th. September 16th, which is the first day of the Day of Trumpets, it comes out. And then you see it even more prominently on the 17th of September. And I'm going to show you this a little bit more, but I guess what I'm getting at is the precision of this. You have this child asteroid coming out of the woman's womb, and it's coming out exactly on the Feast of Trumpets uh, with, with Yeshua who were down there. Now let's get to how these names came about. So um, Child was discovered on March 4th, 1989. It was discovered by Eleanor Heelan. It was named after an amateur astronomer. The amateur astronomer's name was Jack B. Child. Interestingly enough, the initials are JC. This was discovered at the Palomar Observatory in California. So again, uh, what's interesting here is uh, you will see that with, with the comet, when I talked about um, uh, Nishimura and then Yahushua, uh, both of those named their discoveries after themselves. This woman, for whatever reason, and I believe orchestrated by the Lord, did not name it after herself. She decided to name it after a fellow astronomer who happened to be last name Child, and interestingly enough, Jack was his... his uh, his first name, I'm sorry, and um, so you you can co say coincidence again, and it's JC, the initials could be s significant. Um, now let me show you uh, asteroid 3241, uh, Yeshua, uh, was discovered on November 28th, 1978 by this Chinese astronomer, and Yi, so her name was Yi Hushua, uh, Shuhua, I'm sorry, and Yi means leaf, Shuhua means unhurried, deliberate, and beautiful. Interestingly enough, it was discovered at the Purple Mountain Observatory 
and you know maybe I'm stretching, but I'm just going to point this out. Purple is the uh, um, is the color of royalty, is the color of a king. So, but the fact that her name means unhurried, deliberate, and beautiful. Second um, Peter three nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So I, I think the meaning of her name fits the Lord to a T. Unhurried, deliberate, because, you know, again, people will say, you know, where is your Lord? You know, where, where is the appearance of Jesus? You've been saying this for how many years? And again, you know, where the people are scoffers, they're unbelievers, they're doubters, they're, you know, they're the naysayers. And again, I just think the Lord's just showing us these little glimpses. So, I, you know, I take that as face value. So I want to show you on displays now about what was going on before this happened with Yeshua. Um, so I am going to go back to July 23rd of 2022, and I'm asking where was that, where was that asteroid? At what point was it? So on video, you see here I have it circled lower right as the date, and it is right in the direct loin of Leo. It is the star Regulus, and which is why I asked you to remember the announcement of Jesus' birth was the star Regulus circled Jupiter three times, giving us that bright light. So that same star, which is one of the bright, I think it's the brightest star in the heavens. I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, that it joined with Regulus on in July, uh, and it's that same one. So again, I don't find that coincidence, but I, it met up with Regulus. So um, the king star. So again, uh, the, the, the asteroid, uh, Yeshua met up or joined the King Star Regulus uh, in July of uh, 2022. So what happens next? Um, I'm going to go to December 14th of 2022, and I'm going to show you where Yeshua was. So again, I'm going to go back to video. And I was showing you the, the middle there. It moved from Regulus, okay, from July to December. And I show you in the blue arrow where it moved from. And it appears to be in the womb area or the bow about, in the general area of the woman. It could be near the vaginal canal if you wanted to get the script. Um, and again, this is just at this precise time and day. And this is December 14th. So that's where Yeshua was after it had left the, uh, the king star. Okay. Yes, I am getting somewhere with this. I promise you. Because then I'm going to move the date up exactly, I think it's 280 days, uh, but nine months, which is the full medical term for pregnancy. And what happens is that is the date that I'll show you here, where child is on, on September 16th, 2023, child is about to leave the, uh, the womb and about to be birthed. Nine months after Yeshua was there in that same general area. And again, this is all just tracked, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Um, so, you know, I, I just found that astounding. And, oh, and then I'm, I'll just show you again real quick several days later so you can see that it's clearly out. Um, it's clearly out of, of the birth canal. And, uh, you know, so there you have child sitting there, and I give you, again, the date. So all of that happened. And, and, and again, there's just, just way, way, way. I just think it's awesome. 
So the next thing I want to look at is go back to the scripture of Revelation 12, and I'll put it back on video. So what do we see the things that are happening? A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Check, we see that. With the moon under her feet. Check, we see that. On her head were the crown of 12 stars. Check, we see that. She was pregnant and carrying out birth pains and, uh, and the agony of giving birth. Check, we see that. And another sign <clears throat> appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. So I'm not going to get cover this here, but there, we do have information for this. Um, because there's so much more in this. But what I, so what I want to get at here is you have the comet that went through, coming right through uh, around the Feast of Trumpets. You have Child, you have Yeshua. Uh, you have all of these things taking place. It's falling exactly in line with the Feast of Trumpets. We see where Yeshua was, where he met the King Star, then came, wound up in, in that uh, area of the woman, uh, in, in I'll call it the belly, uh, nine months prior to the delivery or the appearance of the child in, in the mother's womb. I'm going to just leave you with a couple of things to kind of, so you maybe you'll understand why I have to do another video, because what I just showed you is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more. Um, but I needed to lay the initial foundation for, you know, that we have for, for signs appearing, what is actually happening today in terms of the child, the birth, and, and, and the signs that we see. But I'm going to show you on video all of the other, not all, but most of the other names of the asteroids that are in and around <clears throat> this area at this specific time. So here's some of the other, remember I said asteroids, there's 1.3 million. Well, what do we find here? What, is, uh, what, what are some of the names? Uh, we have Israel. We have wood, which I will get into. Uh, for those understanding Revelation, we have evidence of wormwood. Um, Ukraine. We have Israel. We have Laban. Uh, what else do we have? Elijah, Lydia. Um, the child, United Nations. There's an asteroid named United Nations. So United Nations and Ukraine. Um, then you see uh, uh, on the woman's right leg there on the top, Saul, uh, the Red Queen. And, and so there's so much, and, and I'm getting 666 is another one. Uh, so all of these asteroids are right now in and around, as I speak, September 13th, uh, in, in and around. So, you know, there, there's a lot to cover there. I'm going to leave you with something that I believe where we're going, and you'll see in the next video that hopefully will give you some encouragement. So remember we said that um, uh, that, that comet sat for, you know, a couple thousand years. So once it leaves Virgo, uh, and again, it's my scribble drawing, so the path isn't exact, but I did a, a line drawing in red where it leaves and it sits on what is called the constellation there, Butis or Boat, it, and it rests and it doesn't move for the next thousand years. So this is me, this is my opinion, and this is, you know, others out there, and I want to actually talk about some others out there too. Um, I believe this is the display of the ark that the ark is a symbol to me, in my opinion, and I know others believe this, and I know some who don't, um, that it is an indication of what will come with the rescue of the rapture. And I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, scriptures for that. But I find it interesting that it sits for over a thousand years. And what is the millennial reign of Jesus? A thousand years. So that's, that's, <laughs> just another thing that I'm sorry I can't say that's coincidence um, so you have that let me go to the scriptures 
Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah, so will be at the coming of the Son of Man. I made mention of this. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, up until the day that Noah entered the ark. So I think that would be um, relatively true today, that people are eating and drinking and carrying on life as usual, uh, unaware or ambivalent to what is going on around. Then if you look at Genesis 7, 1, uh, 4, 7, and 10, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. It will wipe from the face of the earth. I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his son's wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood, and after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. So there was that seven-day respite, and and I would equate that a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Um, but I would also equate that where we the tribulation will be for seven years, and for those who believe in Jesus, they will be in heaven for those thousand years because, remember, Jesus comes back with his church. Um Again, that's, you can say, my, you know, my opinion. I just want to leave you with a couple of scriptures in, in regards to why I believe, some of the reasons, I, there's a lot more. Uh, Thessalon, if you look at um, Second Thessalonians, and I believe some in First Thessalonians, it's, it's all about the coming of the Lord. It's all about the second coming, both the rapture and the second appearance as Jesus comes back for the final time at the end of the tribulation. Um, 1 Thessalonians, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. 2 Peter, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and hold the unrighteous for pun hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. There is coming a day of judgment, and you know most people are familiar with the the account of Lot, where he was rescued. Then in Galatians one it says this: uh, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God the Father. Uh, Matthew 24, apostles ask about the end of the age. Jesus says when. So I believe, without question, and, and some, oh, I wanted to talk about for a second. I apologize. Some of the information presented here, I was able to glean from different people online. Um, I, I'm just learning about Stellarium software, so I had to grab some different screenshots. Uh, you can look them up online. There's a gentleman named um, Thinking Out Loud, Watchman, Thinking Out Loud. Uh, great stuff, great material. And there's a couple of others. There was some Canadians that are, are, are working with some Americans uh, in ministry. You know, again, they, they call themselves, they consider themselves Watchmen. Uh, they're, they're, they're really, you know, they're, they're great in terms of their research and, and digging deeply. Um, I found I needed to pull, pull a lot of different information together in order to teach this effectively, uh, specifically if you were not a believer. I think their approach from as a watchman to encourage believers, and I hope believers would be encouraged, my approach is certainly to help those or encourage those believers, but also to give the unbelievers or the skeptics or the deniers some things to think about. Because the, here you see the Lord pulling out all strings to get your attention. I would equate this as the Lord's, you know, it's 2017 to me, the Lord made this huge announcement and display and showed you how this, where it didn't happen for 6,000 years, it happened exactly as it did. Now, I would equate this to the Lord just throwing a big brick through a window to try to get your attention. So if you don't know the Lord, please, you know, if you're ready and this minister to you, it's as simple as, God, please come into my heart. I need you. I need you to be part of my life. And, and I'm giving you, you know, paraphrases, but just to 
enter in and become Lord of my life. I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I recognize you gave me that uh, um, that forgiveness by accepting you for your work on the cross, for your willing to die for my sins. And obviously, you know, please email me, russickoutlook at gmail.com. I'm happy to, to take that um, and hopefully point you or find, you know, a good church in your area. But that's, you know, if you have done that or if you haven't been going to church for a while, please do. And please know that online does not substitute church. There's, you know, you need to be gathering with the assembly of the brothers. Iron sharpens iron. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I love the fact that I'm able to do this online and give presentations, but I also want to encourage you to please find a good church in your area and one who sticks and stays on the Bible and the authority of Scripture in Jesus. Um, so that, 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 that's really it. But I'm going to get into so much more in the following video. I'm going to get into the dragon. Um, there's some astounding images that I can show you there. Uh, but there's so much more depth uh, little nuances that the Lord laid uh, that, I, that I'll show you that just, you know, f floored me. Um, so I encourage you again, um, you know, look out, check it out. Uh, if, if you're so inclined, if you're a bit of a geek like me, get Stellarium software. I'd love to know it, you know, email me or notify me online on any of the platforms. Or if you discover things or something comes to your attention, I'd love to hear it. Um, again, questions or comments, email russickoutlook at gmail.com. I thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Mark, and remember, as always, just my opinion.